But tonight, we're gonna try to answer a question that I get all the time from investors, especially new investors. Um, but that question is, should I invest in hood houses or lower income housing? Hey guys, it has been an eternity since I put a video together. Uh, and I apologize, it's taken so long. There's lots of reasons for that. Um, the microphone on my helmet broke, um, so I've got a new one. I've got it with me tonight, we're gonna try it. Hopefully it comes through just fine. Um, <clears throat> I am on my way to Bart's house uh, after working all day at the hospital, uh, but it's windy out. Like, it's really, really windy out. Um, it's supposed to die down, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. It might be, might be a bumpy video to watch. Okay, there's one important thing that I think we need to get incoming out of the way. Call. Press the pick up button to answer. I have an incoming, incoming call, call and I have press to press the, the button, button to, to answer. answer. I'll be right back. Incoming. It was my mom. She said she's proud of me and she loves me. Standard mom stuff. Okay, I think there's one important thing that we need to kind of get out of the way before we even talk about the investment aspect of uh, lower end housing. And one thing I think people uh, maybe take for granted or don't think about or don't spend enough time thinking about is regardless of what um, economic tier your properties are at, really high end, average houses, lower end houses, every landlord has an obligation to not be a slumlord, right? Uh, just because you bought a house for $30,000 and you plan to rent it out doesn't give you a pass to let it be a piece of crap. I want to be really, really clear, even though we jokingly say hood houses and things like that, as someone who provides housing to people at whatever level it is, I feel like I have a moral obligation to have safe, clean environments for people who are paying their rent, regardless of what that rent is. Um, if you have roaches, that's a problem you need to take care of it. If your roof is leaking, you need to take care of it. Um, if someone doesn't pay the rent, you don't get to just take the door off the hinges. These are unethical things. And if this is how you would deal with business or tenants of this uh, class, then this is not the game for you. All right, guys, I'm back. And clearly we are not at Bart's house. Uh, we're at the field close to my house where I fly a lot. Um, that night at Bart's, we just got blown out. It was way too windy and we decided to play it safe and just hang out on the ground. But I didn't want to throw that footage away. So we're going to pick up right where we left off and um, talk about lower end housing. So I'm going to set up some gear. We'll get in the air um, and we'll uh, we'll talk through it. All right, guys. Well, wings laid out. I'm uh, on the Dudex Snake today. A couple of things we need to be mindful about today. So this is my tornado. Um, the other night I put a brand new belt on. So this is the first time flying it. So I'm going to try to be really mindful about that. Um, also on my wing, I shortened my brake lines by about two inches and that's a lot all at once, but there was a lot of slack. So we're going to pay a lot of attention to the brake lines today. Hey, she's warm. Well, like I said, we shortened some lines. So at least if I crash, I'll have it all on video. Everybody, we are up and flying, and it's cold today. I don't know if this is gonna last for a long. 
Um, we're gonna do a couple of wingovers here. I wanna, I wanna test these new brake lines just to see how different they feel. So hang on for a second, I'll be right back. much more responsive than it was before. Okay, so if you've been following along, you know that I've done one rental, I've done one flip, I've done one land contract, and the next thing I wanted to learn was lower end housing. I had a mentor that was doing really, really well in it. He owned, I don't know, 140 houses or something like that. And he was kind of coaching me through it and teaching me the pros and the cons and the risks and all of that but he was killing it. And so I decided to give it a spin. So I started interviewing property managers and I think I interviewed three or four, um, but one of them really stuck, uh, stood out to me. Um, I told her that I would like to buy a small number of houses, maybe two, three, four, five houses all at once in a package deal. And so she went to work right away trying to find me a package of houses. And she found five houses, all for about $20,000 a piece. And I know you can't buy houses where you live for $20,000. You can't buy them here anymore for that price either. But seven years ago, you could. And each of those houses uh, rented for about $400 at the time. So they met the 2% rule. And if you hang on to the end of this video, I'll go through the 1% rule and 2% rule at the end in case you want to in case you don't understand what that is. So let's fast forward 7 years later. I still work with that property manager and I still own all five of those houses. They have produced a sizable amount of cash flow on a on a percentage basis. You know, they perform better than just about everything in my portfolio. And we've had a few expenses here and there. We've needed to do a couple of roofs. We've had a tenant trash it every now and then. Uh, I know one flooded in the basement, but the thing is, I never heard anything about it. No one called me in the middle of the night. No one bothered me on the weekends. My property manager handled it all. So hats off to Tammy. Uh, Tammy, if you see this, thank you. You do an amazing job. But it proved my model of you can be hands off and these investments can work. Okay, so that's that's the happy side of it. Oh, the last happy thing is now they all rent for about 600, 650. And of the $100,000, I think I still owe maybe 30 or 35,000. So I have a good equity position in them as well. Okay, so here's the downside. The downside is I could have fallen in with a terrible property manager. Tammy has done an amazing job, but there are other property managers in town who have gone under business or gone out of business. Um, they've had lawsuits. I I've seen a lot of things fall apart. So you in this model, for me, the property manager is everything, truly everything. And so you might not have to manage your property, but you do have to manage your managers. And that's really important. So let's let's wrap a bow around this. So would I do it again? Yes, I personally would do it again. Do I recommend investing in this asset for everyone? No. Uh, you may not have access to the type of property managers that I've had access to. If you choose to manage it yourself, this can be a very tough asset class to manage. Also, these houses tend to be very old and they just have more maintenance than a building that's been built in the last 20, 30, 40 years. Some of these houses are 100 years old. 
And so you need to budget more for your expenses. If you're gonna get into this asset class, you do it just for the cash flow, not for the appreciation. So trade with caution. If you're thinking about it, find a mentor, find people who are doing it in your market and ask them what they think. Okay, motor's doing okay, but I think it's time to take it back. I'm freezing, my belt's slipping, so we're gonna call it good. Okay, I lied to you. The belt's doing okay, so we're gonna do a couple of wing overs, then we'll bring it home. Okay, a couple final thoughts for you on lower end housing. Is it a good fit for you? I don't know, I think you're gonna be the only one that's gonna be able to answer that. Is it for everyone? It's definitely not for everyone. Um, on paper, it pencils out really, really well. You know, that 2% rule, man, that sounds fantastic. And again, stick around to the end. I'll explain 1% rule, 2% rule. Um, it pencils out great. But there are a lot of headaches that come with lower end housing. Um, but like we mentioned kind of at the beginning of this video, everyone deserves a quality place to live, right? And we need people to provide quality housing, regardless of whether it's top tier, lower tier and everything in the middle. So <clears throat> I think there's a need, there's definitely a need. And uh, if you're gonna do it right, you're gonna do it ethically and take care of your tenants and your houses, it can work out pretty well. The other key thing is, your managers are everything. If you're going to do it yourself, that's okay too, but you're going to run yourself ragged and you better be ready to stay on top of it. So those are my thoughts. Um, stick around. We'll do an analysis at the end, but uh, thanks for flying with me and uh, we'll see you next time. Okay. So I thought for the 1% rule and 2% rule, I'd get on the computer and show you spreadsheets, but that's boring as crap and I don't have time for that anyway. So let me explain it to you as simply as I possibly can. The 1% rule, 2% rule, they're quick ways to look at a property and see if it makes sense even before doing a deep dive, right? It's just napkin math just to help you get an idea if this is something you wanna get into, okay? So the 1% rule says for a rental property to work, it needs to generate 1% of its total value in rents every month, okay? So in numbers, we would say, if this is a $100,000 house, it needs to have a monthly rent of $1,000, 1%, every single month. That's the 1% rule. So in hefty markets or very uh, expensive markets, that's the minimum people will take. In the Midwest, we can get a lot more. They're, they're more cash flow properties here. They, they just cash flow better. So a lot of people will shoot for a 2% rule, meaning if it's a $100,000 house, they need to have $2,000 every single month of rental income. So I don't know if that's helpful to you at all, but that's what the 1% rule, 2% rule is. And you'll hear it a lot. Is it a good rule of thumb? It's good on the surface, but it doesn't take into account anything other than numbers. So if your house is next to a cemetery, that it's not in the equation. Who knows if anybody's gonna rent it. Use it cautiously. Uh, be cautious of people who live and die by it because they're not doing a deep enough analysis just to be used on the surface. Um, the nicer the house, the lower the 1% rule is gonna be. So if you have a mansion, you're trying to rent it out, you might only get like 0.6% rule. But if you're in lower end areas, you might achieve a 2% rule, 2.5% rule, 3% rule, something like that. So the rougher the areas, the rougher the house, the higher that number goes, but so do your headaches. So, okay, I hope that's helpful. We'll see you next time.